Hello everyone, back again with some new headphones, some weird headphones, the Pioneer Master SE1. So what makes them so weird? Well first of all, as you can see here, they've got an MMCX connector, which is bizarre for full-size headphones. Usually you only see that on IEMs. This is really strange. And the other one is this tensioning system that you can see here. They have these things called a tension rod. They, they come supplied with two of them um, and they, they go from one side to the other and they increase the tension on your head so that you can make them stiffer or looser according to your preference. It only comes with two of them but that's probably more than enough. It's just weird that they built such a complicated system for such a minor feature really. Uh, they, they weren't sent in with the other tension rods so we didn't actually get to test how much of a difference it makes. But it was a nice little system. Uh, we've been sort of toying around with the idea of doing something like that ourselves as perhaps a mod, like a universal mod that would fit on all different headphones. Uh, but we haven't really sort of made moves into actually creating that yet, but we do have some ideas. As you can see I've just popped the pad off and I'm giving them a good little clean. Uh, they're quite a complex construction, there's lots of little bits here and they all go together. Uh, these are Pioneers, I think they're from 2015, and they're the best that Pioneer had to offer at that time. Uh, they're handcrafted by master craftsmen in Japan or something or other. But they are very high quality, everything that looks like metal is metal, um, it's all finished really nicely, all the parts fit together, and it is quite a complex construction. You can see there's little bits of cotton over the top of the screws, and those screws have washers on either side to isolate everything, and that's pretty much the case throughout the whole build here. There's been a lot of attention paid to keep them quiet and keep them, uh, they don't rattle, they don't sort of squeak at all, they, they just sit there really nicely. Um, I managed to dig up the brochure for these and they really did throw every bit of technology they had at this thing. This is this had all of their innovations, they, they mentioned all sorts of bits. Their drivers are pretty cool, they look to be made in house, they're made of poly ether ether ketone which is a crazy plastic that uh, we're just beginning to sort of make the most use of now, it's like an engineering material. It's super super temperature resistant so you could probably set the whole headphone on fire and the driver diaphragm would be the only thing that would be left. To that they give it a ceramic coating which is where they sort of sputter ceramic onto it it's like an electrochemical process and uh, that's supposed to make it stiffer and more resistant to like bending uh, so you get you get just the vibrations that you want and not the un unwanted ones the reason we have them in here today is to replace the mmcx connectors because they're all they've broken they got mangled um, which is kind of to be expected on a headphone for this application it's just it's a wild choice of connector. So we're replacing them with 3.5s, but because of that I didn't get to listen to them until after we'd done the 3.5s. And I'd found this sales brochure beforehand, so I was really hoping for this, this sort of, it'd be absolutely amazing, it'd blow me away. Um, and they're all right, they're fine, you know, they're not, they're not incredible, but they, they sound pretty good. So here's how we ended up doing the sockets. Uh, we, we tried to remove them in the conventional way, they've got screws, but they're also glued in. So eventually we just decided that we'd just blast all the way through it with a drill. And that worked fantastically actually, that was absolutely perfect. The metal hole that you can see there is essentially just the right size for our 3.5 socket that we install in everything. So all we had to do was drill out the MMCX connector in the back, um, which, which wasn't particularly difficult, we just went straight through it and then everything fitted in really nice. I did this pretty slowly and carefully. I started off with a tiny little drill bit and I slowly increased the size uh, just so that we had that pilot hole in there because I really didn't want to scratch or mar these headphones. Um, they, they're quite valuable actually. I think they, they cost around £2,000 when new. Uh, I can't really find a direct source for it but it, roughly around £2,000 when new. And aluminium is a soft metal, it's very easy to scratch up and make it look a bit naff. So we would, I was just doing my best to avoid that. You can see we've got them clamped down in a vice, but we're using a towel and all around it. We've sort of poked a little hole with the towel. We've just nestled it in there like a like an egg. We don't really work on many pioneers here, so it was nice to have them in. It was a bit of a breath of fresh air. Uh, they're, they're constructed quite differently from the normal types of headphones. We're quite used to... Bear Dynamics and Sennheiser, so that's what we do most of our work on. And they're very much designed to come apart. And these kind of are, but there's also a bit more to it. Like that these have a thousand parts. They they sort of they didn't scrimp and save at all. You can the Bear Dynamics and the Sennheisers are very much like built for economy and sound and sort of durability. They're quite industrial. Whereas these are very much no expense spare. They just threw everything at the wall and 
saw what stuck. The construction's really quite impressive, but you can see why they were charging such a high price for it. There's hundreds of tiny little washers, loads of little uh, grommets, all sorts of rubber isolators. There's just about everything you could possibly throw in there to give you the best experience possible. The body's all made out of metal. Uh, drivers use crazy plastics and the yeah, it's, it's everywhere. Uh, like all the hinges are greased up. You you never see that. It's super rare. Um, but something that we often do, just because it makes them feel a bit nicer. Like sometimes we'll put grease in the bear dynamics and stuff to just try and like when we do our mods, we just want to give the best service possible. You want when we want the customer to open up their headphones and they sort of it's stuff that you can feel. Um, but that takes a bit of extra work and in an assembly line it's not necessarily the type of thing that you'd always want to do. Oh, so this here was a bit of a miss. I uh, popped this shrink tube over the top of the sockets that we're going to be installing. That turned out to be the wrong idea. You can see I end up taking that off because it doesn't fit. Um, we ended up just having to route the cables uh, quite differently to ha how I initially envisioned. Um, I, I thought that we had a lot more horizontal space but it don't really, it's quite tight in there. Uh, but I mean, I guess it's intended for an MMCX connector, which is minuscule compared to the 3.5 that we're stuffing in there. It's quite fun to see in the macro though. Everything looks a little bit more fumbly than it does when you're doing it in person. Uh, like to me, this felt like I was doing quite a good job, but then when you look at it so close up, you can see all the, all the flaws and everything that you did wrong. Uh, and your hands are a bit shaky and it's all quite a lot less elegant than it felt when you were doing it in person. So we drilled the hole out to 10 mil um, and the barrel of these connectors are exactly 10 mil. So it was, yeah, you can see there's a cut there because we, I, I had to take it out and shove it against the, the desk. Like it, it took my whole weight to force that thing in there. Uh, so that's never coming out again. That's, that's properly stuck in there. Um, we, we glued it around the side anyway. So yeah, that's, that's permanently in there now. Uh, if if it ever needs a mod again, you might have to drill it out once again, uh, but I'm sure that would be fine. You can see I've already removed that bit of shrink tube. Uh, there's already stakes for the cables to be routed along. Um, I just ended up covering it with glue to isolate it so that we don't get any shorts or anything. You can see more of the lengths they've gone to isolate things here. All of those bungs around the edges, uh, the, the three, they're all rubber. Um, you can see the one that's just covering the covered by the blue wire there that's a rubber bung all three it's really interesting cracking into the higher end headphones because you really get to see what they choose to prioritize their budget on on the lower end headphones uh, like they never would have done all of this isolation on the lower end headphone because it's just probably not worth it uh, like they they would have tested it and found out that it makes maybe like a a one percent difference or something and they just on the lower end ones they're a lot harder to design because you have to make all of these sacrifices whereas on these high end ones you can just really throw the kitchen sink at it and just chuck everything you feel like in it because you know that you're selling it for £2,000 at the end of the day. This didn't end up being a particularly difficult mod. Uh, the hardest part was figuring out what to do and how to do it. Uh, if I were to do one again I could probably do the whole thing in 20 minutes maybe. Uh, I, now I know to go through it with a drill because I spent quite a lot at the start uh, just trying to figure out how to remove the original connector um, and once I found out that there was no point in doing that and to just drill straight through it then I, I blasted through it like it was no problem um, I don't know if any of you work on cars but I do a bit and it's a lot like that uh, the first time you do something it'll take you a whole day and then the next time you do it it takes you 20 minutes um, I mean we're coming up for just about done here and the, the headphones are all back together and they're looking really good uh, the, the pads are a little bit flaky on this pair, but I'm, I'm sure you can find a replacement online. Uh, we weren't asked to do so, so we just popped the original pads back on. And uh, they are all done. Yeah, they were quite pleasant to work on, and they do sound quite good. It was nice to give them a try after having done all the work on them. So yeah, there we go. Uh, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. If you have your own pair, then please send them in. Or if you have any other weird or wacky headphones, send them in, and we'd love to take a look at them, work on them, and then maybe even make a video about them. Cheers.